Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A little while ago we did an installation guide for these new EK coolers on AMD's AIM4 based platform, but I wanted to wait until 10th gen was here and Z490 was here before we did the Intel version. With that said, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the brand new EK AIO 360D RGB liquid cooler in an Intel based desktop system. However, I will not be covering Intel HEDT in this guide at all. kick this video off now. This video is for demonstration purposes only and this video is not a review. Every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different so make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for any of your PC builds. Now this guide will give you the fundamental idea of how to install the EK AIO 120-240-360 DRGB coolers in an Intel desktop based system. Now, we also have an AMD AIM4 based version you can check out in the top right hand corner right now if you haven't seen it yet. And also make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because chances are, I'm gonna answer all of those questions right at the start of this video. Anyway, let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte Z490 Vision G. The case is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Intel i5-10600K. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only and this video is not a discussion about pricing or performance or whether or not you should buy this cooler. It's for those people out there who actually want to know how to install it. And let's talk about some more of those questions. The fan placement in this video for this case is correct and it also depends on your case and the clearances in your case. Yes, this cooler and fans have a dressable RGB. Yes, your motherboard will need to have at least one addressable RGB header to use the lighting for this cooler. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on it. You can do whatever you like. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box. Yes, it will work for almost every single AM4 and Intel motherboard CPU and motherboard combo you're gonna ask about in the comments from around 2008 into the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB, and RGB Fusion. Yes, the thermal paste is included and it's also pre-applied, but you can use the included thermal paste if you want to replace it. Yes, you can plug it into the five volt, three pin addressable RGB controller, basically any ARGB controller, including the EK loop connect. No, you don't have to fill the cooler up. You don't have to top it up. You don't have to maintain it at all. You don't have to do anything. You just install it. And yes, I reused some footage from the AM4 guide as there's quite a bit of crossover between the Intel and AMD versions. And even though it's the 240 version shown in that video, the 360 is identical. Anyway, let's see what's in the box and let's see how to install it. Okay, ladies and gents, let's take a look at what's in the box with the EK AIO 360. And this guide is for Intel desktop installations only. So things like the 11 5X sockets and the new LGA 1200 socket. Here's the installation guide that we're not going to be using, although it is quite detailed and very, very good. All right, let's take a look at what's in the box. The first thing is a bag full of all the mounting hardware, all the cables, additional thermal paste, and all of that stuff that we're gonna take a look at in a little moment. First up is the three EK Vardar fans. These are addressable versions of the Vardar fans, and they are very, very nice. All right, let's uh, pop out that liquid cooler itself and take a little bit of a closer look at it. Now, you'll notice that the design of this cooler is absolutely gorgeous. I think they did quite a nice job with how this looks. And you'll also notice that there is pre-applied thermal paste on the cold plate. You can remove this if you like and use the included thermal paste that comes with this cooler as well. Okay, let's take a look at what's in the bag with all the other stuff. There is a PWM splitter. Next up is the Intel backing plate. Now this backing plate is required for this type of insulation. So make sure you keep it handy because we are going to need it. Next up is the Intel mounting brackets. This connects to the water block and these are the ones we are going to be using. So also make sure you keep these handy and you don't lose them. There's also a tube of EK Ectotherm. Now this is to replace the thermal paste if you wanted to take it off or if you're reinstalling the cooler. And I think it's really nice that they actually included some additional thermal paste, which is quite unusual for an all-in-one cooler. 
This is all of the mounting hardware that we're going to be using for this installation. So there's some screws, there's some thumb nuts. Yes, they're called thumb nuts. There's some load bearing springs to add some extra mounting pressure to the socket. And also the bolts that screw into the Intel backplate, which I showed earlier, which you will need for this installation guide. With all that said, let's get installing. All right, you'll notice on the back side of your Intel board, there will be these kind of bolts that are coming through from the socket. And what you wanna do is grab the back plate that comes with this cooler. And you'll notice there's also holes that line up with that and they actually go on. So the back plate can only go on one way. Now I'll recommend you the easiest way to do this. Place the backing plate down on the table, get the holes on your motherboard to line up with the backing plate and you should be good to go. Now locate these bolts, you'll need all four of them. I'm gonna show you how to do this the easy way. They look exactly like this. Uh, there is another type of bolt with this for a different type of insulation, but you need those. And what you wanna do is just finger tighten them in through the hole on the motherboard into the back plate. I usually do this in opposing corners just so the mounting pressure is correct. And you wanna rinse and repeat this process until each corner is in and do a little bit of a sanity check once they're all in just to make sure they're in nice and tight. Now what we're going to do is remove the plastic cover from the bottom of the cold plate of the cooler to expose the pre-applied thermal paste. Now make sure you don't touch it, otherwise you'll have to use normal thermal paste and reapply. Grab these four screws and what we're going to do is install the Intel brackets onto the bottom of the water block. And they look exactly like this as I've shown a little bit earlier in the video. I'm going to show you two ways how to do this. They only go in one way and what you'll need to do is line up the holes on the bottom and use the included screws to fasten them to the bottom of the water block. I'm going to show you this one more time so you can see it from a bit of a different angle line up those holes, get those screws, and screw them in nice and tight. Not too tight, but just tight enough. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to install the fans on the radiator inside of your case. You'll notice that some of this footage is reused from our AM4 version of this install guide as well. Locate 12 of these screws. They look exactly like this. There are 12 other screws, but I recommend using these. Put the screw through the fan, just like I'm showing here. Put the radiator on the inside of the case and just be aware though, this is the correct radiator placement and fan placement for the Fantex P400A. Yeah, that's basically it. And what you want to do is just attach them. It's very straightforward. The holes will all line up and use a screwdriver to make sure they're all in nice and tight. And once you're done, what you need to do then, and what I recommend doing, is getting all of the fan and RGB cables and passing them through to the back of your case so we can get on with the cable management a little bit later. This will make your life a lot easier. Trust me, you'll wanna be doing this. Next up, what we're going to be doing is getting these thumb nuts. Yes, they're called thumb nuts. And you're gonna get the load bearing springs, just like I'm showing here. And we're gonna install the water block onto the motherboard now. Lower the cooler onto the bolts that we mounted to the board a little bit earlier. And what you wanna do then, once it's all lined up, give it a little bit of a wiggle to spread the thermal paste. Get the springs, place the springs on each of the bolts that are sticking out. Get the thumb nut and just finger tighten it. Don't tighten it too much, just a little bit for it to hold on. Get the opposing corner, repeat the same process. This is the way that I recommend doing it and just getting on nice and lightly. Don't do them up all the way, just get them to sit on there. Grab yourself a screwdriver and what you wanna do is then tighten them up on opposing corners so you can evenly distribute the mounting pressure across the whole top of the IHS of the CPU correctly. And rinse and repeat that process until it's all done, until it's all nice and tight, and then we can move on to the next thing. You'll notice there's two cables coming out of the water block. The first one we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the RGB cable through to the back so we can wire it up a little bit later on in the video. And the other cable, what we're going to do here is locate it and we're gonna locate the CPU opt header on the motherboard so we can power the pump itself. It looks a little bit like this and then just plug it in and we should be good to go. Now locate the three-way PWM fan splitter. What we're gonna do is plug this in now to make our life a little bit easier a little bit later in the video. Locate the CPU fan header on the top of your motherboard. 
plug it in and pass that also through to the back and that's it. And everything you're seeing from here on out is from the AM4 guide because it is exactly the same, although the version that we filmed with this footage you're about to see is for the 240, but it's actually exactly the same. So yeah, let's get on with plugging in the fans and the RGB. The next thing we're going to do is locate the PWM splitter that we plugged in at the beginning and plug the two PWM fan cables, one from each fan, into that splitter and that will allow both of the fans to spin so they can blow air to cool your system. Next up we're going to start on the lighting. Now I'm going to show you how to do this two ways. It's a three pin five volt addressable RGB system. It uses the addressable RGB standard. I'm going to show you the first way. Now the fans themselves can be daisy chained. So you remove the little plastic cap to expose the additional cable for daisy chaining and what you would want to do is plug this end in to the pins that you've just exposed and the other end will plug into your motherboard. I'm going to, I'm going to go through all this so you don't have to worry. I'm going to show you how it's done. Basically what you want to do is plug one fan into the daisy chain. It's very straightforward and it only plugs in one way. Don't worry. You can't really mess this up. What we're going to do is take the plastic cap off the other side, the one that you just daisy chained and plug the pump top sliding straight into that. And what we're going to do is pass the other end of this cable, the one that you didn't plug into anything, we're going to pass that through the bottom of the case, back around to the front side of the motherboard. What we're going to do then is locate an addressable RGB header, which is here. It's a three pin connector. We're going to plug that straight in and with some luck, it should light up and the whole cooler should work. I'm going to quickly show you a second way of doing this in case you want to control the pump individually. What you want to do is not follow the last step to plug it in, locate an additional addressable RGB header if your motherboard has one and then plug that cable in and now you'll be able to control the fans lighting and the pump lighting individual and with a little bit of luck it should all work and look a little something like this. I think I pretty much covered everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below. Not our community Discord, we have two. So if you need help, head on over to that and there's a link to that down below as well. And make sure you read all the comments because myself or someone probably would have answered any questions you've got already. Please take that into consideration before asking any questions. I just don't want you guys to waste your time. And I, yeah, I basically just don't want you to waste your time answering stuff that I've already answered. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, consider hitting the join button or getting early access to videos just like this one over on Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And like I did mention already, we did reuse some of the footage from the AM4 guide because there's a lot of crossover. And the reason we didn't do Intel HEDT, we don't have any HEDT motherboards or CPUs anymore. Thanks for watching.